In all cases, from infancy to young childhood, the children preferred to look at, receive things from, and befriend others with their native language. Christina Olson and colleagues at Yale University have examined how children perceive others who are lucky or unlucky. How children perceive luck may influence how they perceive people who have differences in the advantages that society has given them. Children between five and seven years old were told stories about other children who had experienced either controllable or uncontrollable and positive or negative events. The controllable positive event was a child helping a teacher. The controllable negative event was the child telling a lie to their mother. The positive uncontrollable event, the lucky event, was the child finding five dollars on the sidewalk. And the uncontrollable negative event, the unlucky event, was having a rained out soccer game. What they found was that children did like other children who were lucky more than children who were unlucky. So they liked the child who found $5 on the sidewalk the most, even though he had nothing to do with that event. They did control somewhat for whether the event was controllable or uncontrollable. So they disliked the liar the most. Controlling Stereotyping and Prejudice Patricia Devine at the University of Wisconsin-Madison believes that there is a distinction between cultural knowledge of stereotypes and personal beliefs about an outgroup. Devine suggested in research conducted in 1989 that those who are motivated to do so can suppress cultural knowledge and behave without prejudice. Participants came into the lab and they were given a questionnaire to measure their own personal level of prejudice. So people were classified as either low in prejudice or high in prejudice. And both were asked to generate, by writing down on a piece of paper, different stereotypes about African Americans. What the re researchers found was that, regardless of whether the person was high or low in prejudice level, they were able to generate the same number of stereotypes. High prejudice people showed a high degree of overlap between beliefs and stereotypes. They believed what they had learned culturally. Low prejudice people corrected for the effects of stereotypes. They replaced stereotypic thoughts with personal beliefs, that is, with more positive thoughts about the stereotyped group. In contrast, in 1994, Neil McRae and colleagues at the University of Wales studied people's ability to suppress stereotypes. Past research had suggested that trying to suppress a thought while under cognitive load or mental stress actually caused a rebound effect, causing that thought to occur with greater frequency. Participants were asked to write about a typical day in the life of a male skinhead. Half of the participants were asked to try not to actively use stereotypes in their description, and half were not. Participants then wrote a second story about the skinhead. Participants who suppressed first had more stereotypes crop up in their second story compared to those who had expressed stereotypes all along. This suggests an ironic rebound effect. The more we try to suppress biased thoughts, the more likely we are to express them. 